Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the New Testament. Listen to the words of assurance that Jesus gives us as he offers them to his disciples. The first reading is John 14, verses 1 through 7, page 803 in the Pew Bibles. Do not let your hearts be troubled. For you believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And now Jesus offers peace to all of God's children, those who see and those who struggle to believe. And in John 20, verses 24 to 28, a joy away in your two Bible. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. <coughs> but he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. <coughs> Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God, this is the word of the Lord. I am sure you're wondering what I'm doing in the pulpit this morning to get ready to deliver the sermon. I can assure you no one wonders that more than I do. Uh, but let me start by telling you how I got here. After having the honor of being uh, chosen to serve this church as an elder, it was requested that the new officers attend an orientation class to find out what our duties and responsibilities would be on a new elder or a deacon. And it was a very worthwhile two hours. At one point during Chris's presentation, I heard somewhere in the back of my mind that Chris said that he would expect one of his elders to fill in at the last moment in the pulpit in case something happened and he could not be there at that point. And this caught my attention and I immediately woke up. I mean, I sat up uh, and listened more closely to what he was saying. As most of you know, I'm not shy. And I thought I could to myself, yeah, I could do this, but I kind of put the thought aside. And, you know, strangely enough, the thought would not leave my mind, and I found myself thinking about it all the time. After some prayerful consideration, I went and visited with Chris and told him that, you know, I would be willing to do this if needed, and what he meant for me in writing a sermon. Now, to clarify a point here, is that when Chris said during the training session that he would expect one of his elders to fill in, for him in case something happened to him, I'm pretty sure that he gave the example that he might, for instance, have had an appendicitis attack at four in the morning and had me arrested for surgery, surgery. I can envision myself standing here this morning asking you to put Chris and his family in your prayers for his quick recovery. You know, the term road trip never entered my mind in the context of <laughs> Because but that's okay because Sarah Allen has an important decision to make about where Chris and Cameron's money is going to be going for the next four years. <laughs> or at least they hope it's just four years. <laughs> and certainly these uh, institutions of higher learning and visiting them shows a certain amount of fiscal responsibility on Sarah Allen's part. Now back to where I left off. After I asked Chris to mentor, mentor me in writing a sermon, he agreed and told me that the first thing I needed to decide was uh, what scripture would I use for the sermon. And I thought about my Christian journey and knew immediately that the sermon would be about fluctuating faith. Today is a step in a journey that began with me 50 years ago. And somehow it got derailed along the way. It will surprise you that know me best, really surprise you, to learn that 